From a little drink starting in a pharmacy to a world leader in beverages, Journey of Pepsi. Today, we bring you the world famous soda pop story and the triumph of determination over failure and controversy. Pepsi Cola remains one of the world's most successful and popular beverage items. The humble beginnings of Pepsi date back 125 years when it began as a North Carolina pharmacy product. Since then, Pepsi has been marketed in several forms. Let's quickly jump to the story of how the simplest of drinks became a Cold War player and a celebrity favorite. On May 27, 1867, Caleb Bradham was born in North Carolina. He was always passionate about medicine and finding new ways to help people. While attending the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill in 1886, his father went bankrupt and he had to return home. Having taught for a short time, he then enrolled at the University of Maryland. As soon as he graduated, Bradham opened his pharmacy in New Bern, North Carolina. In 1893, pharmacist Caleb Bradham created the formula for what would become Pepsi-Cola. As was common at the time for pharmacists, he ran a soda counter in his pharmacy that supplied drinks he made himself. His most favorite drink was called Brad's Drink, a mixture made from water, cola nuts, honey, sugar, nutmeg, lemon oil, and several other ingredients. On August 28, 1898, Brad's Drink was renamed Pepsi in honor of the pepsin enzyme. He believed that Pepsi would aid in digestion and be healthy for everyone. After the news of the new drink went viral in North Carolina, sales of Pepsi began to rise. Charlotte and Durham, North Carolina became the first franchised bottling plants in 1905. In addition to 300 new plants, 24 states saw an increase in demand. In its time, Pepsi was also a pioneer in the use of motor transport for the shipping of products. Pepsi took a strong stance when the Food and Drug Act prohibited dangerous chemicals from public food and drugs because it only incorporated natural ingredients. As a safer alternative to other beverages, Pepsi-Cola was a big hit with many Americans. Pepsi had originally been marketed to consumers as a digestive aid, claiming an exhilarating beverage that aids digestion. As the Pepsi brand prospered, the company switched tactics and opted to use celebrity endorsements instead. Pepsi employed the former race car driver Barney Oldfield as a spokesperson in 1913. His iconic slogan was, It was very refreshing and turned out to be a nice bracer before a race. In the years to come, the company continued to attract customers by using celebrities. Aside from running a drugstore, Caleb also served as president of the People's Bank of New Bern and became the Craven County Board of Commissioners chairman. He was even considered for the office of Governor of North Carolina at one point. He also served in the military as a naval officer, known as the North Carolina Naval Militia, where he became a commander in 1904 and a captain in 1913. Sugar a key ingredient for Brad's drink, grew from a nickel to over 20 cents a pound after World War I. As a result of Bradham's heavy buying, prices increased even further. In 1923, sugar prices eventually dropped to two to three cents. The gambling he did cost him a lot, as he bought at high prices, and eventually the market prices dropped. As a result, the business was forced to declare bankruptcy. As of this time, Coca-Cola was the dominant brand sold in nearly every country in the world. Tiny Pepsi had a bleak future ahead of it. In 1923, Pepsi declared bankruptcy, and its creditors took over its trademark, patents, and other assets for $30,000. Bradham continued to be active in his community. A scholarship program started by him, famously known as the famous Bradham Price, in which Winner got a scholarship at the university department in Chapel Hill School of Pharmacy, North Carolina. Even after going bankrupt, this scholarship for pharmacy students went on until 1930. As a result of his long illness, Caleb Bradham died on the 19th of February, 1934, and was buried at the Cedar Grove Cemetery in New Bern. Roy McGargle, a New York-based investment broker, nevertheless saw promise in the product. In an attempt to save the company, he sought to raise money from the market, but the market was uninteresting and the efforts failed. Roy McGargle bought out Pepsi creditors for $35,000 in the summer of 1923 by creating a new Pepsi-Cola company. McGargle went to great lengths to keep Pepsi afloat, lending it money and moving the offices to Richmond, Virginia. While McGargle tried his best, the company was unable to survive the Great Depression. 
the Pepsi Corporation declared bankruptcy again in June 1931. At one point, Pepsi even was on the market for sale to executives at Coke, but they refused to bid. In fact, almost three times during 1922 through 1933, Coca-Cola was offered to buy Pepsi, and each time Coca-Cola refused to partner up. By 1931, after passing through multiple investors, Pepsi-Cola was purchased by Loft Candy Company. At the height of the Great Depression, Loft's president, Charles G. Goot, struggled to succeed Pepsi. During Goot's time at Pepsi, he decided to sell the beverage in 12-ounce bottles for just 5 cents, which was the price of Coke's 6-ounce bottles. Not just that, in 1932, Pepsi also became the first company to advertise its brand using plain names as Pepsi-Cola Sky Pilot. More than 2,500 messages were written over the states of North and South America, Canada, Mexico, and Cuba over the next several years. Pepsi was the first beverage company to broadcast a radio jingle that advertised its Nickel Nickel brand from coast to coast. Advertising Age named it one of the most effective ads of the 20th century after it was recorded in 55 languages. Pepsi provided the U.S. military with a constant supply of sugar during World War II and the drink became a familiar sight to the troops. The American flag influenced the logo colors, which launched after World War II to support the troops. Pepsi's icon of the globe hadn't existed before the 1960s, and has been changed almost 11 times since then in the 122 years since it became iconic. The most recent one was updated by the Arnell Group for $1 million and boasted a 27-page design brief. A few years later, in 1955, Joan Crawford married Pepsi President Alfred Steele and rose to prominence as Pepsi's spokesperson. She appeared in many advertisements and commercials, along with Pepsi-themed beauty pageants. In the early 1960s, like other companies, Pepsi began aiming marketing towards the baby boomers. Pepsi began advertising at a young demographic called the Pepsi Generation in 1961, followed by its first diet soda in 1964, focused on the younger demographic. A number of changes were occurring in the company. After purchasing Mountain Dew in 1964, Pepsi merged with Frito-Lay in 1965. Growing up quickly, Pepsi was becoming a popular name. As a result of the merger between Pepsi-Cola and Frito-Lay Inc., PepsiCo Inc. was created in 1965 and moved its headquarters to Purchase, New York in 1970. During the Cold War with the Soviet Union, Pepsi became the first U.S. product to be produced and distributed in the USSR in 1974 and appeared in international news. In 1975, a famous challenge called Take the Pepsi Challenge, where people were blindfolded and asked to choose between Pepsi and Coca-Cola took place. Can you guess the results? Yep, the majority of people chose Pepsi. Around the mid-1970s, Pepsi had more than 500 patents, including one for a tennis racket produced from synthetic resin in place of nylon and wood. Another great move they made was to introduce the two-liter bottles for the first time in the market in 1976, developed by Nathaniel Wyeth. The Pepsi Generation campaign that ran through the 1980s targeted young drinkers. A year after, Michael Jackson became the face of Pepsi, being in the midst of his fame for Thriller, Pepsi hired him to be its spokesperson. Throughout the ensuing decade, Pepsi hired celebrities and musicians such as Michael J. Fox, Tina Turner, and Geraldine Ferraro to star in their TV commercials. Coke decided to change its signature formula in 1985, after Pepsi's success. In response to the New Coke failure, the company had to go back to its classic formula, which Pepsi regularly took credit for. However, Pepsi suffered a failure of its own in 1992 with the launch of Crystal Pepsi, which failed to impress millennials. Shortly thereafter, it was discontinued. In the 1990s, Pepsi Japan Division created history by introducing a superhero mascot called the Pepsi Man. Several TV commercials were created showcasing his power. It became so popular that several merchandise and games were launched based on it. There is still a rivalry between Pepsi and Coca-Cola. This became evident for most of the marketing strategies launched by Pepsi, and one of them was the one in 2011 showcasing a polar bear and Santa Claus rejecting Coca-Cola as the superior drink and asking for Pepsi. An open declaration that Pepsi is far more superior than Coca-Cola. 
PepsiCo's history is lengthy and full of fascinating developments, which all began when Brad's drink was developed in 1893. The company produces chips and beverages in a wide variety of flavors. With 22 brands so far, the company has become a global phenomenon. As with its rivals, Pepsi has been growing in ways that Caleb Bradham could never have imagined. As a brand from 1893 that pays homage to its heritage, there are different varieties of Pepsi Cola, including Diet Pepsi, Cherry Pepsi, and Vanilla Pepsi. Additionally, Pepsi was the first corporate entity to hire black sales executives to grow its African-American market. As part of its expansion, the company has branched out into the sports drink market, offering Gatorade sports drinks, Aquafina bottled water, Amp energy drinks, and Starbucks beverages. The PepsiCo brand portfolio includes Pepsi, Mountain Dew, Gatorade, Lay's potato chips, 7-Up, Cheetos, Aquafina bottled water, and Tropicana beverage products. The company had revenues of $64.7 billion and net profits of $12.5 billion in 2018, ranking PepsiCo 48th among America's largest and most profitable public companies while being the largest food and beverage company headquartered in the United States, second to Switzerland's Nestle. PepsiCo ranked 34th on Fortune's list of 500 companies with a return on assets of 16%. The success story of PepsiCo, spearheaded by a single entrepreneur and his passion for innovation and their business strategy of adapting to market changes, is one of the most valuable lessons for aspiring entrepreneurs everywhere. The video is now a wrap, but we have one last question to ask. How would you like your story to end? Please share your ideas in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to see even more amazing and inspiring videos. Get notified when we upload new content by clicking the bell icon. Thank you.